All right, guys. So I think most of us are here now. Um, I just want to first and foremost say thank you for joining us today. Welcome to Virtual Otter Day. We're very excited we can find a way to come through to you guys and celebrate how amazing otters are, and especially the two otters we have at our zoo. My name is Annie Wheeler. I'm the lead naturalist at the zoo, and joining me today, I have Brian Sheets, who is our zoologist, who works very closely with our otters and a few other species at the zoo as well. So just before we get started on everything, um, I'd like to kind of go over Zoom real quick for anybody who's not familiar. I will not be able to see or hear you at all. You don't have video or audio, um, but if you want to communicate with us, you're welcome to. You can do that one of two ways. If you have just comments to make, you can go ahead and utilize the chat function, which should be towards the bottom of your screen. If you have a question that you want myself or Brian to answer, go ahead and put it in that Q&A and that will hopefully be able to be answered by the end. Um, we'll try our best to get to as many as we can. So what we're going to do is watch some really great enrichment video as we chat a little bit about our otters today. So we're going to get that video for you started down here and we're going to learn a little bit about our otters. So Brian, my first question for you is that we have two North American river otters at our zoo. Can you tell us a little bit about them, what their names are, how to tell the difference? Sure. Sure. So, uh, like Annie said, we have uh, two otters. We have a male and a female. The male's name is Sailor. He's 13 years old and he came to us from a zoo in Myrtle Beach. And uh, Sailor's been with us about eight years. Ashki, she has just turned four and she came to us from the National Zoo. Uh, they do look a little differently. Males are generally slightly bigger than female otters. Sailor looks a little thicker, a little stockier than Ashki does, and she has kind of a long, lean look to her. The sailor also has uh, a much lighter markings underneath his chin and his chest, and he has a series of dots underneath his nose in the shape of a smile. That, so that's how you can tell them apart. Good to know, because I believe we see both of them in this enrichment video today. Um, what did you do for this enrichment? Because I see them swimming around and being interactive, but what are they going after? Today's enrichment is live fish. They're fathead minnows that we pick up at um, a local bait shop. We add two or three dozen minnows to the pool at a time, and they're, they're pretty small. You know, they're, they're only like about that big. Uh, so two or three dozen isn't really a lot. And we give the fish a few minutes in the pool to kind of find their hiding spaces, and then we let the otters out. Nice, and are they typically able to catch all the fish? during the, the short span of the enrichment, or does it last longer than that? It lasts longer than it used to. Originally, when we put the fish in, our pools were, were kind of bare in the bottom, and we've added literally a ton of river rock, as well as logs and branches and sticks and stones and other things, natural debris into the pool, that helps give the, the fish the opportunity to hide, and uh, just like they would uh, if they were in a pond or a stream. So when we let the otters out, the otters have to work a little harder, uh, basically like they normally would if they were in a pond, to root around and try and find the fish. Nice, nice. And we have a lot of different forms of enrichment that we use for our animals at the zoo. What is it that makes live fish so special? What is it that sets it apart from other enrichment forms that you might put in for the otters? Well, the otters, they're carnivores. Carnivores can be challenging to, to uh, enrich and, and get them engaged mentally and physically and eliciting natural behaviors. But with the otters, it's kind of a unique situation since they're semi-aquatic and a lot of their prey is actually fish and bait fish are readily available and used you know, frequently by fishermen. So uh, when the otters have to chase down their prey, that's exactly what they'd be doing in their natural range. And it, it uh, it's the most stimulating thing we can give them. We give them fish and we give them meat as part of the regular diet, but generally not live. But when they're given live fish and they have to go out and physically hunt and seek them, it really uh, occupies a lot of their time doing what they'd be doing naturally. And one of the bonuses of giving them the live fish is after the live fish are mostly gone, we'll still see a few stragglers even as much as a week later because they have places to hide. And I've noticed a change in the otter's behavior uh, because after, say, the live fish, the obvious ones are gone by the end of the day, over the course of the week, the otters, instead of just swimming through the pool like they normally would, 
now that they've been getting fish regularly, they will dive down and root through the rocks to see if they can spook a fish out that's been hiding. So in a way, it's changed their behavior for the better. It's occupied their time more, even when the fish aren't there, they're still looking something they didn't do before. So I'm really happy with how it's, how it's worked out. That's really great. And especially because Ashkey is so much younger and what, from what I've seen, very active. Um, and with her being new to our zoo and younger than Sailor, do you notice a big difference in their activity level between the two of them um, or their willingness to interact with things in the habitat? Or is it about the same for both of them? She's definitely more curious uh, for a couple of reasons. One, because she's younger. So Sailor's, he's 13. He's been with us for a while. He's seen the viewing glass a million times. It, he, he doesn't pay any attention to what's behind it. Ashki, she's in a brand new environment. She's very young and naturally inquisitive anyways. So yeah, she's stimulated by what's going on behind the glass. She'll follow the keepers as we approach the glass and she'll look if we put something in front of her. Uh, a lot like the sea lion Mary Lou does, a lot like that. Um, she's very active. She swims a lot. He swims with her for the most part, but there are times when he's, I think he's had enough and he'll go take a nap and she keeps on swimming. So she's maybe 25% more active than he is. Very cool. Now, but I, I also um, think that she makes him more active. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely a good thing. They seem like they're quite the good match. Yes. Um, we, we have heard that guests often have a hard time seeing the otters when they're at the zoo during the day. So do you have any advice for guests on if there's a better time of day to see them or if they have favorite hiding spots that you can give us kind of the secret info on where to spot them? Sure. In the hottest part of the summer, uh, they're usually only active in the morning and the late afternoon. In the middle of the day, they're usually sleeping. The otters are always on exhibit when the zoo is open. It's just a question of, of figuring out where they are. And if they're not swimming, they're generally down the lower pool area, the outside viewing glass. We have two hollow logs down there on each side of the, the pool, and they're almost always sleeping in one or the other. So, and it's very easy to miss them when you walk by. If you don't lean down and take a look all the way through the log, you might not see them. But they're on their exhibit uh, the entire time the zoo is open. Nice, good, good to have that little tip on where to look for them then. Um, now, Ashke and Sailor do have a breeding recommendation through the Species Survival Plan. So that is our um, yeah. AZA regulated breeding program that basically looks at all the genetics in our zoo animals and makes sure that if they are breeding, um, we're doing it responsibly. So their genetics are not overlapping, we're not inbreeding, we're making just good genetically healthy and diverse offspring. So since they do have um, a breeding recommendation, can you tell us a little bit about how that's going so far or your hopes or views for the future on it? Well, we've overcome the biggest hurdle, which is getting our new otter Ashki used to her environment and comfortable with it. And then the same thing with her new mate sailor. And that's gone extremely well. We let Ashki have the exhibit for a while by herself so that she could learn it, memorize it, feel comfortable in it. Then she was introduced to Sailor and they got along famously right away. It, it, it went as well as we could ever hope for an introduction to go. And they're basically inseparable. So, so far so good. The breeding season for otters is generally late winter to early spring. So we're gonna to have to wait for a while to see if that continues. But in the meantime, we feel that we've set them up for success by providing them with a a space that they feel comfortable and feel safe in it. And that's got a lot to do with whether or not we have successful breeding. And Ashki is already a, a proven breeder. She had three pups at the National Zoo before she came here. So we know that she is capable. So yeah, we have high hopes. Everything's going the way it should so far. That's good. So we just have to kind of stay tuned over the next few seasons and see how things go with them. Yes. Now, although our two otters are clearly doing very well at our zoo, even during the time that we're closed. Um, otters do have a very complicated history in New York State, specifically in our local region. Um, previously, they have not been in our river. They do naturally live in our river and our waterways, uh, but for many years they were extirpated. So they were locally extinct, uh, largely due to things like unregulated trapping. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people do want otters fur, um, to sell or to trade or to have for their own. Um, they also face problems with pollution. Our waterways getting too dirty. And if the waterways are too polluted, there's not 
really food that the otters can eat there because those smaller species like fishing crustacean need clean unpolluted water to be able to survive. Um, they also had issues with overfishing and taking away their food too. And for a long time they were not found in this area. Um, we did go through the New York State River Otter Project in the mid to late 90s um, where we relocated some otters up from the Adirondack region down to our Genesee, um, about 300 of them, and the zoo did play a part in, in doing that. Um, and we saw that become successful, but that doesn't mean that they're out of the dark. So we are seeing them start to come back. Um, can we try to figure out what we can do to help um, or what their current threats might be um, just so that we can get involved in helping them succeed in our local waterways? Well, you're absolutely right about the, the quality of the water is the main thing that will uh, allow otters to live here and, and thrive. And yes, trapping is allowed even in New York State. Now, the, the otter population is stable. There are other parts of the state where trapping is still allowed, um, but the population is, is doing well. And if we want to do something that would help uh, the otter conservation cause, I would recommend looking at uh, candidates when you vote whose uh, priorities are a clean environment. You can recycle diligently. That's got a lot to do with our, our water quality and our environment quality in general. Uh, and if there's a local waterway that has a, a volunteer cleanup, or even if it doesn't, volunteer to clean up a local waterway and try and uh, improve something in your own backyard. Absolutely, and we do run uh, park and beach cleanups during our regular season too. Obviously things are a little different right now with our current situation, um, but we will be starting those up again once it's safe to do so. So keep an eye on our social media too, and you can join uh, myself and a couple of other staff members in going and cleaning up our waterways and our parks. Um, a lot of people don't understand that when they litter, when you throw something on the ground, even if you're way far away from the Genesee River, there's a good chance it's gonna end up in a lake or a river because when you throw trash on the ground, um, you're gonna have wind come through, you're gonna have rain come through, and eventually a lot of that stuff gets swept away from where you were originally tossed it on the ground and ends up in our waterways and can be really detrimental to species like our otters too. And otters are really important to have, not just because they're cute and we love them. I mean, that's definitely a good thing too, but they, they're really important for the biodiversity of our waterways. They help keep our fish and crustacean population under control and they just play a really important role there. So it is important to conserve them, not just fun because we love them. Um, we have a couple of questions coming in here. We have okay. um, Sarah asking, do otters eat anything other than fish? Yes, they do. Uh, fish is the main part of their diet. Um, in their natural range, they eat frogs, they eat bird eggs, they eat insects, uh, pretty much any small animal they can, they can catch, they'll eat. Uh, at, at the zoo, they have a balanced diet of meat and fish and we feed them the small fish for enrichment. We also give them hard boiled eggs and I will throw earthworms or mealworms or even crickets in the pool and they'll eat those also. Very nice. Um, we have Ursula asking if they hibernate in the winter. Her son Jack wants to know if they're hibernators. Not at all. They, they do very well in the winter. The otters are well suited to the winter climate. They have a, a very thick coat of fur, actually two coats of fur with a layer of air trapped in between. That's why when the otters swim, you see the bubbles coming up. That's the air in between the layers of fur that's helped keeping them warm and dry. Uh, they do fine in the winter. They love going out in the snow and sliding down the hills. Uh, yeah, nope, they do not hibernate. Excellent. Um, and we have Jerry asking how much the two otters weigh. Sailor weighs approximately 21, 22 pounds, and Ashki is just a pound or two behind him. And is that the average they get weight, weight on a for them? They get weighed on a monthly basis. Okay, yes. cool. Yes, yes. Um, how do you get their weight? We have a scale that sits underneath a large, wide piece of plywood, and we just stand in front of them, uh, in front of their den cage and they'll approach us to get a food reward and when they stand still we get their weight and then we give them a food reward. Great. I think that would work uh, with me too. If somebody had a food reward for me and asked me to come over to a certain place I'd be like sure. 
Sure, must work pretty well yes. with the animals too. <laughs> Positive reinforcement. And they understand, since we do every month, they understand it, it is a, a train, training behavior. They understand to uh, walk up on the board and hold still. And when we uh, give them the signal that we've gotten the behavior desired, we give them the reward. Excellent. Uh, we have a few different people asking how to tell which otter is which. So they may have not been here at the very beginning when we talked about that. So can you just kind of go over again how to tell the difference between the two of them? Sure. Ashki, she's long and slender compared to Sailor. And I guess you have to see the two of them together to figure out which one that is. But Sailor's a little stockier. She's kind of long and lean, but he's got a lot more grayish white underneath his chin and down into his chest. And he's got those dots under his nose that form a smiley face. Perfect. Um, we have Aaron asking, do they like to play together? Absolutely. I have tons of footage of them wrestling in the water or rolling around on the, on the land. Uh, mostly they play wrestle in the water, but they do that several times a day. And for some reason, uh, especially after they've eaten their last meal today, I usually feed them around three o'clock and then by 3.30, they're out there having a, a regular play session. So yes, they do that uh, constantly. And I hope everyone gets to see them when we open back up. It sounds like with how active Ashley is, especially, there's a pretty good chance of people spotting them together. Yeah, I once think Once we so. get open again. Awesome. Um, we have an anonymous question coming in asking, is it true that otters like bubbles? Have you ever tried bubble enrichment with them? You know, we have a bubble machine and I tried it with them and Sailor absolutely wouldn't even look at it. And Ashki looked at it for like a microsecond and decided it wasn't anything she was interested in and kept on going. But we had a bubble machine right in front of that glass, blowing bubbles for about five minutes and they completely ignored it. <laughs> but I could put my sandwich down there, my lunch sandwich, and she'll stare at it. So. It's always interesting to figure out which different forms of enrichment stimulate individual animals because i've yes. definitely seen that bubble machine work well with other species <laughs> um we have tina asking what are the 13 different species of otters that's a big question oh i think i know who tina is um, i cannot name 13 species of otters tina is going to have to look that one up i don't have it memorized all right thanks tina right. thanks tina that's quite, that's quite the question. I think most people wouldn't yes, be able is. to name 13 of them off the top of their head. Um, we have Emma coming in asking what the otter's favorite foods are. So do Sailor and Ashley have different foods or treats that they prefer over other ones? They do. I, uh, it depends on what fish we offer them and their daily diet, diet. They get a couple different kinds of fish. They get um, capelin, they get herring, they get mackerel sometimes. Um, they seem to prefer the capelin, but they also get meat, and they seem to prefer the meat over any kind of fish. They also like hard boiled eggs a lot. Mm, sounds good. Uh, we have an anonymous question coming in asking about how they are during quarantine. And I've heard this come up with a lot of our animals. People are wondering if the zoo being closed down is affecting how our animals are interacting with each other, or what their activity level is like, or how they're interacting with their keepers. Have you noticed a big change um, since the zoo has been closed for the last couple of months with our otters? Not really. I haven't seen um, much change at all in Sailor. And the only change I've seen in Ashki, Ashki got here by the time she was out on exhibit, we had already closed. And I've noticed that she's a little leery of seeing visitors outside when we have maybe a group of keepers will come watch her play and um, there's maybe three or four of us. She seems a little leery, so she's gonna have to get used to when we open again and there's large crowds there. But overall in their behavior, uh, Sailor's behavior, I haven't really seen any changes. It seems like it's been a, a bigger change for us human animals over the, the animals that we have at our zoo. A little bit more it's of an adjustment quieter, that's for sure. to it, yeah. Um, we have Aaron asking if our otters are happier together. So are they typically a social species? Would they normally be together as pairs or groups in nature? They're typically, they're by themselves. It's usually a female and her offspring or a small group of males. In our setting, 
I believe that Sailor is much happier having a companion. He was, uh, his companion, Heather, passed away last year, and he was by himself uh, since then. And I think he really needed to have another otter around, and I think he's much happier now that we've uh, brought a, a companion in for him in Ashki. So I think he's happier with another otter. And Excellent. she seems to be also. It sure looks like they're enjoying each other's company in the enrichment videos. Um, we have a couple of questions directed to you personally, Brian. Um, we have a question yes. is, of if you have a favorite otter between okay. the two of them. I do not. It's, it's, it's hard to choose. They, they touch you in different ways. And as a keeper, I've been asked that question about a lot of the animals I work with. And they, they all touch you in different ways. And you just, each one is uh, special. I know it sounds like a cop-out answer, but I honestly, I, I can't pick a favorite. Um, they are all great in, in their own way. Absolutely. And along the same lines of that, um, we have Anonymous asking, what other animals you work with in the zoo? And what your favorite species to work with is? Currently, I work with uh, the Eagle Pond, all the animals in the Eagle Pond, the otters, uh, the cranes are in my section, the raccoons. Those of you that know me know how much I love the raccoons, and uh, we also have the snowy owls. Uh, in the past, I've worked mainly with primates. I spent a lot of years with the orangutans at our zoo before uh, they left and we took the main building down. I will say that I think the, the great apes, the orangutans, always brought out the best in me as a keeper. It seemed to match my skill set the best, um, but it's still hard to pick a favorite. Absolutely. Sounds like being a zookeeper, um, it's not just one animal that you're focused on. It's a huge variety of them that are in those sections. So that's gotta be interesting. Um, we have- Yeah, it is, never, never a dull moment. Yeah, absolutely. We have Kate wanting to know, how do you become a zookeeper? If someone's interested in that. We get a lot of our zookeepers from our, our volunteer pool. Uh, there are qualifications that you can find on the county's website about what you have to have in order to become a zookeeper. And generally, we have a, a pool of volunteers and we've hired from that pool if they've met the educational requirements because we've seen them work. We know how they are. We know how they are around the animals. We know if they're safe. We know if they're enthusiastic. We know if they get along with other staff that kind of thing. So if you met the educational requirements and volunteered with us, that would probably be your best chance. Good in advice. the meantime, though, I do talk about volunteering a lot at our zoo, uh, but you can also get experience other places. There's sadly animal shelters all over the county that need lots of help and you can always do some volunteering there to either start or add to your resume as far as animal experience, whether it's dogs, cats, or uh, uh, animals at a zoo. It's still a good, uh, a good thing to do and a good place to start. Absolutely. Um, we have Anonymous asking, are there any jobs for little kids that are related to working in the zoo? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug that one a little bit. We do have zoo camps typically over the summer, and you can stay tuned to our social media and our website to see our status on that. Um, depending on how young they are, we have camps for very little kids all the way up to our zoo teen program where you can um, volunteer in different ways being a teenager instead of the, the more child-based camps. Um, so my answer to you, Anonymous, would be to check in on our website and our social media um, to see what opportunities come up. But I always say that if you're interested in any animal-related things um, when you're young, try to really get in on that. Try to, you know... Getting, getting it on camps and really getting that enthusiasm going in those kids is really awesome. And we love to see it. That's a big part of why we are working at a zoo is to really try to inspire um, everything from really little kids to our older folks as well to really care about these animals. That's how we can make a difference. That's why zoos are so important. So I like that um, you're looking at your younger kids getting them into it already. Um, we have another question to ask. <laughs> Absolutely. We have another question asking, Brian, if you enjoy just sitting and watching the otters. I do, and uh, I have to admit, with the zoo closed, this is usually where I have my lunch now. I swiped a couple chairs from another part of the zoo, and I sit right where the camera is now, 
for my morning break, my lunch, and my afternoon break, just so I can watch the otters. Nice. I like it. Um, and we are pretty close to the end of our time here, so I'm going to end on this question for you, Brian, and that is, what is your favorite part of being a zookeeper and working at our zoo? My favorite part of being a keeper is being able to contribute in some way to the animal's contentment. That's always been my focus is what would make this animal more comfortable. So if I think of something that I think that they would like a bench or a shady spot or a log to sit in or something to nest in or something along those lines and I, I uh, produce it for them and, and give it to them and they actually use it, that's like, that's the best. That's that's all I could ever hope for. And I go home feeling I have a, a sense of accomplishment. That's so that's awesome. what I like best. And this Seneca Park Zoo is, is a uh, relatively small zoo and a relatively small staff. And in settings like that, it's fairly easy to make a difference if you can think of things to contribute to the animal's well-being. You can, you can figure out where the mater materials are. You can get help building it, get help setting it up, make it happen, and there you go. Absolutely. And if you guys um, come to the zoo, once we do reopen at some point down the road here, um, and you look in the otter habitats, you'll see, you can even see in the video here, you can see a hammock hanging in the back there. There's um, logs placed all over the place for them to have good shady spots and napping spots in there. Um, and I will put the spot on Brian for a second and just say that he's one of the most creative keepers in making enrichment and really getting it in there and figuring out how it works best for the animals. So. Um, next time you do come to our zoo when we do reopen, take a minute to just stop and look around these habitats. Look for all of those really cool enrichment items that all of our keepers across the zoo work really hard on putting in there to improve the habitats and really make it a great place for our animals. So Brian, I want to just say thank you so much for being a part of this. We really appreciate you joining in and answering all of our crazy questions that came through here. Um, I enjoyed it. It's been a long time since I answered questions. <laughs> We definitely are looking forward to the zoo reopening and seeing all of our guests hopefully in the near future. So thank you guys all so much for tuning in um, and keep your eyes out for the rest of our Otter Day experiences throughout the day and all the things you can tune in on our website and social media pages as well. So enjoy the rest of your afternoon and happy Otter Day, everybody. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.